not now, Jigglypuff. Hi, I'm Professor Silver, and today I'll break down the history of Jigglypuff, tracing her transformation from a downtrodden diva into the Pokemon anime's most notorious sociopath. Before we dive in, I wanted to clarify that Jigglypuff's gender is never confirmed. I've always considered her female, so I'll use she, her throughout the video. Jigglypuff is a true superstar. Over 24 years, the Balloon Pokemon made over 35 anime appearances across six sagas. She's beyond recognizable. Thanks to her popularity and cuteness, alternate versions of Jigglypuff have appeared in various media, including The Electric Tale of Pikachu, Pokemon Yellow, Pokemon Snap, Super Smash Bros., and Detective Pikachu. In the anime, Jigglypuff first appeared in the 45th episode, The Song of Jigglypuff. At her core, she was a jovial diva who loved to sing. When she met Ash's gang outside of Neon City, she was very sad. Somehow, Jigglypuff had lost her voice. Consequently, when Misty tried to catch her, the Pokémon didn't resist. Instead of catching her, Misty helped Jigglypuff regain her singing ability. Alongside Brock and Ash, Misty tried various remedies, like vocal lessons and inhalation exercises. Unfortunately, these efforts failed to restore Jigglypuff's voice. Instead, they revealed something crucial. Jigglypuff hated to share the spotlight. When Pikachu received praise for his singing, Jigglypuff kicked him. Her desire to be the center of attention would become one of her most defining character traits. No matter where she was or who she met, she always wanted the spotlight. Eventually, Jigglypuff regained her ability to sing after Brock fed her some fruit. As soon as her voice was restored, she sang a beautiful melody. Regrettably, her song put everyone who heard it to sleep. This created a huge dilemma. Jigglypuff loved to sing for an awake audience, but the song's effects made this impossible. Whenever she saw that her audience was asleep, she would puff herself up and use the marker within her mic to scribble on her victims' faces. Scribbling on them helped relieve her feelings of not being appreciated. At the end of the day, she was a bitter artist angry at the world for not appreciating her craft. After Misty, Brock, and Ash slept through her first performance, their Pokémon did the same. It appeared Psyduck could withstand Sing, but it turned out he slept with his eyes open. The gang tried to make it up to Jigglypuff by letting her sing in Neon City, but no one stayed awake. By the time they awoke from their slumber, Jigglypuff was nowhere to be seen. The trio wondered where she might have gone, with Misty still hoping to catch her. Strangely, Misty's wish to catch Jigglypuff wasn't referenced in future episodes. Misty probably gave up on the endeavor, because Jigglypuff's personality resembled that of a sociopath. In nearly all her future appearances, she showed little empathy, behaved aggressively, felt little guilt for the harm she caused, and had no problem manipulating others to serve her needs. All she cared about was achieving her dreams of stardom and finding someone who could listen to her song all the way through. Honestly, Jigglypuff could have used therapy, so let's talk about our sponsor, BetterHelp. Between the channel and my day job, I work 60 to 70 hours a week. You might not see it from my videos, but I'm under a lot of stress. I love what I do, but my happiness often hinges on my work. It's an extremely unhealthy way to live. Thankfully, with the help of my therapist on BetterHelp, I've started reducing my daily stress by incorporating mindful meditation and deep breathing into my daily routine. Overall, I've really enjoyed therapy. It's given me an outlet to vent my frustrations in a safe space without judgment. Previously, I'd just complain about my wife to my friends. Now, I can complain about her to someone who won't tell her. So if you're feeling overwhelmed, stressed, or just need someone to talk to, I highly recommend trying BetterHelp. They make it easy to connect with a licensed therapist online from the comfort of your own home, usually within 48 hours. BetterHelp's comprehensive questionnaire helps match you with a therapist who understands your specific needs. Chatting with your therapist is super easy. You can message them, talk over the phone, or schedule video sessions. Whatever makes you comfortable. If you're ready to take your first step towards a healthier mindset, try BetterHelp for yourself by going to betterhelp.com alexsilver, clicking the link in the description, or using code alexsilver at checkout for a special discount during your first month. Let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who can support you from your home. You deserve it. And now back to Jigglypuff's history. Unbeknownst to the gang, Jigglypuff followed them to Grandpa Canyon in the episode Attack of the Prehistoric Pokemon. 
Her return established that she saw them as nothing more than tools to help her find an audience. For example, when Ash fell into an abyss, Jigglypuff saw the rocks that trapped him as a stage, rather than a danger. She believed the world was her stage, and got mad when Brock and Misty tried to free Ash. The scene showed how her grasp on reality was tenuous at best, and madly delusional at worst. Even after Ash got carried away by Aerodactyl, all Jigglypuff thought about was getting her spotlight. She only helped save Ash by putting the prehistoric Pokémon to sleep, because Misty promised they would listen to her singing as much as she wanted if she helped. Although Jigglypuff helped Charizard save the day, the deal she made with Misty would haunt the trainer and her friends for the rest of the series. From then on out, Jigglypuff followed them in many adventures. Much like Team Rocket, Jigglypuff didn't care that she wasn't wanted. In case of the canine capers, for instance, she disrupted Ash's battle with Growlithe and swiped a voice-changing megaphone. Later, in Riddle Me This, Jigglypuff terrorized Ash, Brock, Misty, and even Gary and his cheerleaders on Cinnabar Island. Further on, in Volcanic Panic, Jigglypuff tried to sing while the gang worked to dam an erupting volcano. This showed how she put her dreams above the safety of others. It didn't matter to her that her singing would have prevented the gang from stopping the eruption. If not for Ash hurrying her away, she might have killed them all. After leaving Cinnabar Island, Jigglypuff got trapped inside a wild Blastoise. Even in her dire predicament, she refused to give up on her dreams. Thanks to her singing inside the shellfish Pokémon, Blastoise and all its subjects were forced to sleep. Had Ash and Squirtle not discovered them in the episode Beach Blank Out Blastoise, they might still be asleep to this day. Jigglypuff was so relentless that immediately after being freed, she returned to singing. The ordeal signified that Jigglypuff's presence forebode impending chaos. This was further exemplified in Clefairy Tales after she doodled on wild Pokémon and investigated a falling teapot. Upon discovering the teapot fell from a Clefairy spaceship, Jigglypuff went to war. Clefairy stole her mic, so she enlisted the help of Ash and his friends to get it back. During the adventure, Jigglypuff used Pound and Double Slap to defeat every Clefairy that crossed her path. Regaining her microphone was of the utmost importance to Jigglypuff, because without it, she couldn't be a star. With the mic back in her possession, Jigglypuff invaded a film set in Light's Camera Quaction and disrupted a fight between Pikachu and Vulpix in the ancient puzzle of Pokemopolis. Because of the latter disruption, the gang uncovered ancient artifacts which released a giant Alakazam and giant Gengar. Jigglypuff tried to quell the Titans herself, but surprisingly, they were so large that they survived her song just long enough to blast her off. In the end, it was the ancient Pokémon Bigglypuff who put the Titans to sleep. Bigglypuff was essentially a larger version of Jigglypuff from the distant past. Although they were of wildly different sizes, the two shared the same personality, motivation, and goals. Jigglypuff briefly disappeared during the Indigo League, but returned many times in the Orange Islands. In a scare in the air, she accidentally released the gang's blimp to the region, showing once again that her care for others was virtually non-existent. Rather than apologize for her mistake, she acted like a villain and scared Team Rocket. Perhaps even more monstrous, Jigglypuff sang Team Rocket to sleep in Pokeball Peril, causing their blimp to crash. Like on Cinnabar Island, her actions revealed that she valued the achievement of her dream significantly more than the safety and well-being of those around her. Regardless of her motives, for the rest of the Orange Island saga, Jigglypuff followed the gang wherever they went. After singing to Ash and his friends in the Lost Lapras, she intimidated Team Rocket in In the Pink. In the episode Snack Attack, her abilities finally came in handy. Ash used her to put a Snorlax to sleep so he could weaken it with Pikachu and then catch it. Soon afterwards, Jigglypuff menaced the gang in a way off day off, boarded their boat back to Kanto in the underground roundup, and tried to stir up trouble at Oak's lab in a tense situation. When it came time for the gang to travel to Johto, Jigglypuff largely maintained her role as a thorn in their side. The biggest difference from previous sagas was that she appeared less frequently. For reference, after she traveled to Johto in Don't Touch That Dial, she took over 30 episodes to then return in Tunnel Vision. At the episode's start, she developed a rivalry with Madame Much Money Snubble. When she tried to draw on the Pokémon, it stole her microphone, causing her to spiral into a deep depression. Jigglypuff's despair was so palpable that Ash and his friends volunteered to help her get her mic back. Although they tried their best, their efforts were in vain as Jigglypuff kept falling for Team Rocket's pitfall traps. Suffice to say, her stubbornness detrimented their progress. Only after Jigglypuff bonded with Meowth did she finally rebound. 
The two shared their hopes for the future and decided to form a dream team. However, Jigglypuff quickly proved she had no loyalty to anyone except herself when Meowth tried to stop her and Snubble from fighting. Rather than help Meowth overcome his bully, she brutally attacked him. After retrieving her mic, Jigglypuff returned to her life as an unforgiving diva whose personality bordered on sociopathy. She went away for a little while thereafter, but resurfaced 40 episodes later in the episode Freeze Frame. Found frozen atop Snowtop Mountain, Ash's Cyndaquil melted her free. Despite being rescued, Jigglypuff immediately slapped Ash's friend Todd for getting in her face about a wild Articuno. Misty asked her with a gentler touch, so Jigglypuff briefly traveled with the gang, helping them to find the legendary Pokémon. During this time, she posed for a photo with the gang and floated with Pikachu, showing a brief glimpse of her good side. In the end, however, she was blasted off by Articuno and returned to a life of infamy. Possibly out of affection for Meowth, Jigglypuff sang to him at story's end and followed him to a power plant in current events. There, she constantly tried to sing, but her audience continually threw her mic. Eventually, she sang to a bevy of electric types, Team Rocket, and Ash and his friends. No matter what happened, Jigglypuff never seemed to change. After floating through a storm and throwing in the knock towel, she nearly caused a plane crash by singing without regard. If lightning hadn't woken everyone up, they surely would have perished. In her next Johto appearance, Jigglypuff returned to the center stage in the episode Same Old Song and Dance. Much to her chagrin, she had to share it with some much cuter Igglybuff. Because of their adorableness, Jigglypuff became extremely jealous. Jigglypuff was so envious of the attention they received that Ash hid her microphone to stop her from ruining their owner Brittany's concert. Throughout the rest of the story, Jigglypuff bullied the Igglybuff and attacked them whenever they received attention. The frustration Jigglypuff felt about playing second fiddle only grew after Team Rocket disrupted her singing. Ironically, her singing was within itself a disruption as well. Jigglypuff tried to slap Team Rocket into submission, but got countered by Wobbuffet and kidnapped alongside her Igglybuff rivals. After Team Rocket discovered they had nabbed her by mistake, decided they didn't want her, and tied her to a tree, Jigglypuff erupted with anger. Upon finding the villains, she clobbered Arbok and Victory Bell using Double Slap. Of course, after Brittany finished her performance, Jigglypuff put the entire stadium to sleep and scribbled all over their faces. The song would be her last of the saga, as her only other appearance in Johto was a brief flashback in Wish Upon a Star Shape. In Hoenn, Jigglypuff's appearances were scaled back significantly. During her one and only appearance in the episode of Pokeblock Party, she followed the gang into a trick house competition. Her attempts to sing to them ended both in hilarity and her finding a perfect Pokemon to hear her song. The gang's new friend Alana had a Whismur, whose soundproof ability made it immune to sound-based moves. As you can probably imagine, it delighted Jigglypuff to see Whismur stay awake. She likely thought that she had found a friend for life. Sadly, at episode's end, she mistook Whismur's sleeping for a lack of interest rather than exhaustion. Whismur was simply too tired to stay awake after the events of a long day. After Jigglypuff was referenced in Caterpie's Big Dilemma, she wasn't seen for many years. Others of her species made brief appearances, but Jigglypuff herself didn't return until Sun and Moon. In Alola Canto, she returned to Oak's lab so as to sing and scribble. When Ash returned to Alola and when regions collide, Jigglypuff hitched a ride. Upon Jigglypuff's return being discovered in Now You See Them, Now You Don't, she got star billing and let sleeping Pokemon lie. At the episode's start, she floated through Alola, putting both Team Rocket and the Pokemon School occupants to sleep. Ash and his friends awoke with markings, but were surprised to discover that Samson Oak's Kamala had dodged Jigglypuff's scribbles. Unlike other Pokemon, Kamala couldn't be put to sleep because it already spent the entirety of its life asleep. No matter what Jigglypuff did, she couldn't mark Kamala. Ash and his friends tried to dissuade her by letting her sing to them instead, but she saw through their fake glasses and continued her tirade. Ultimately, Oak fought fire with fire by teaching Kamala sing. The singing battle between the two ended with Kamala putting Jigglypuff to sleep. Upon awakening, she discovered that the Pokemon had scribbled on her. Although Ash and his friends worried Jigglypuff would be angry, she responded with laughter. As a result, for the first time in the series, she left on the highest of notes with no malice in her heart. 
Tasting her own medicine briefly made Jigglypuff self-aware. Woefully, her epiphany didn't last long as she drew on Mudbray in the Dex Can't Help It and Grandpa Forest in Don't Ignore the Small Stuffle. Jigglypuff's final two Alolan appearances involved floating by Ash's school in Got Meltan and stowing away on Ash's plane to Kanto, in Thank You Alola, the journey continues. In Journeys, Jigglypuff made her final appearance in the episode This Could Be the Start of Something Big. To my eye, at least, her snoozing in a field signified that she had finally found peace and learned to live with others, without subjecting them to chaos. But I'm probably being too hopeful. In all likeliness, she probably started to sing as soon as she woke up. As that concludes Jigglypuff's history to date, let's get to her battle record. Jigglypuff defeated Wild Clefairy, Jesse Zarbok, and James's Victory Bell. She lost to Samson Oaks Kamala in a sing-off, but since it wasn't a battle, Jigglypuff kept her perfect record. Move-wise, Jigglypuff used Double Slap, Pound, and Sing. As a fan of Pokemon since the anime first released in America, I'm also a lifelong fan of Jigglypuff. What I like most about her is that she's unabashedly true to herself. Although she looks cute, she's also a psycho. There's no other Pokemon in the franchise that's more selfish and maniacal. It's a bit of an exaggeration to call a cartoon character a sociopath, but when you look at her appearances, it kind of fits. Jigglypuff is a lot like a Batman villain. She does awful things, but in her head, she's a downtrodden hero whose genius has yet to be recognized. While I like Jigglypuff as a character, I do wish the writers had closed the loops on some of her unresolved storylines. First, I think Misty should have explained why she never caught her. Second, I wish Jigglypuff would have found a home among Pokemon with a soundproof ability. Although her showdown with Kamala provided her some emotional growth, I feel bad that she never fully achieved her in-universe dreams of stardom. Jigglypuff never achieved her dreams of stardom within the show, but her impact on the anime and the world as a whole is beyond immeasurable. For as long as Pokemon continues, I can't imagine she'll ever fade into obscurity. Thanks to additional spotlight and other media, it's undeniable that the Jigglypuff species has reached a level of popularity that few fictional characters or actual real-life people will ever realize. Like she would have wanted, audiences worldwide celebrate her. And on that note, class is adjourned. I want to give a big shout out to BetterHelp for all their support. To try it for yourself, click the first link in the description. I'm Professor Silver. Until next time, catch you later.